Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again. I want to welcome you back to another Sylvester Stallone movie review. And today I'm going to be reviewing uh, the last action film that he did on his own. And I'm talking about Bullet to the Head. Um, I thought this was okay. Um, I really like that artwork. I think that artwork is pretty cool. Um, which is why I got the DVD instead of the Blu-ray. And plus, the Blu-ray didn't have any exclusive features. And I'm not surprised because this movie failed at the box office. Which, you know, is not a surprise. But I thought Bullet to the Head was okay. Um, you know, I, when I first saw the movie... I feel a little more comfortable here. I Like I said, I did see it in theaters. I believe I saw it opening day, if I'm not mistaken. And... I will admit, when I was in the theater watching it, I thought it was good. I liked it a lot. It had some cool stuff in it, I thought. But over time, um, I think that I just thought it was okay. And it, it's, it is mediocre. It is a mediocre film. There's no, no doubt about that. It's definitely not as good as it should be. Um, I definitely expected more from Walter Hill as a director. And, you know, Stallone is there. You know, there's not really much for him to work with, I will say that. Um, they didn't give Stallone much in this movie, and it shows. And I just hate the the behind-the-scenes shit that went on during this movie, which I'll get into. But Bullet to the Head was okay. It was disappointing. Um, and I'm not surprised that it failed the box office. Number one, because, again, I'm going to say this, you know, till the end of time. You know, action films are not popular anymore. Old school action films are not big money makers anymore. And I know what some of you were thinking. Well, what about Taken? Taken only made money, and you know, I liked the first. I really enjoyed the first film. Um, the sequel sucked. Both of them sucked. Although there are things that I liked about them, which is why I have them in my collection. The only reason why Taken made money is because of the fact that it was Liam Neeson in an action film. That's it. That's the only reason why the movies, all three films have made money. Because all three films have been successful financially. But that's the only reason why those movies were successful. Because if you would have put, like, Sylvester Stallone in that movie and Taken, wouldn't have made as much money. There's no, it's true. It would not have made as much money. But Expendables made money. That's because it's Expendables. It's... It's Stallone, it's Arnold, it's Van Damme, it's Bruce Willis, it's Chuck Norris, it's Wesley Snipes. It's all the different guys. That's why it made money. Well, G.I. Joe made money. G.I. Joe is not an old school action film. They're CGI out the ass. They're shaky cam out the ass. The only thing that was old school was in the second film you had Bruce Willis. That was it. That's the only old school thing about the G.I. Joe franchise. So... Action films don't make money anymore because if action films were still popular, The Last Stand would have made money. Sabotage would have made money. This film would have made money. People say, well, what about Die Hard? It's because it's fucking Die Hard. I guarantee you, again, like I said in the Rambo review, if you make 20 more Die Hard films, they're all going to make money because it's Die Hard. That's why... That's the only reason why it makes money, because people know what Die Hard is. Just like Terminator. Terminator Salvation sucked. Terminator 3 sucked, but they made money. Terminator Genesis, probably going to make money. And it's going to be PG-13, so there you go. So, oh, it's, that's the safe side of things. Whatever. But this movie, Bullet to the Head, definitely tanked at the box office. And I guess because it was delayed so long, because it was supposed to come out in like April of 2012, it was actually supposed to come out before Expendables 2, and then it got pushed back for an unknown reason to September of 2012, after Expendables 2, and then it got pushed back again, and they released it in fucking February, in the dead of winter. And what? And I know people are saying, well, Die Hard... Five came out, you know, a couple of weeks later or the week after. But again, what people don't understand is the fact that it's Die Hard. Bullet to the Head is just a, a, a different, you know, an ordinary Stallone film. It's not Rocky, it's not Rambo, it's not Cobra. It's just Stallone playing a normal character. Well, not really normal, but you understand what I'm saying. 
He's not a superhero like Rocky or Rambo. What came out before this movie? The Last Stand. And you know what? The Last Stand tanked at the box office. What came out a year after this movie? Sabotage. Sabotage tanked at the box office. Well, Sabotage sucked. Last Stand was really good. But it's because nobody cares about Arnold Schwarzenegger anymore. Again, well, Terminator's coming out. It's because it's Terminator. Just like, you know, Arnold wants to do another Conan film. It's probably not going to make any money. It's probably going to flop at the box office because no one gives a shit about Arnold Schwarzenegger anymore. It's because he went and became governor. And apparently, you know, I, I don't live in California, so I don't know the political situation. But apparently Arnold did a shitty job as a governor. Or he didn't do, you know, he did some good things, but he didn't do as many good things as he should have or whatever. I don't know. I don't live in California. I don't know about all that. That would take research, and that's not what I'm doing for a review of a Sylvester Stallone film. And also because Arnold cheated on his wife and had a kid with the maid. That's why people don't like Arnold Schwarzenegger anymore, because he lied and had a kid, had another kid, had a, you know, an affair, and had a kid. Not an illegitimate child, because there's no such thing. And then he became governor. That's why people didn't go to see... Excuse me. The Last Stand or Sabotage. And also the fact that it's because action films aren't popular anymore. And when they do an action film like this, nine times out of ten, it's going to suck. Or it's going to be lackluster. Like this movie. Like Die Hard 5. Die Hard 5, you know, I saw that in theaters and I liked it. I like the movie. It's okay. It's not the best. It has a lot of problems. Mainly Bruce Willis and the director and the script. But, oh well. <clears throat> but the reason why this movie tanked is because no one gives a shit. Excuse me, keep belching and everything. There. No one gives a shit about action films anymore. People are not going to the movies to see action films anymore. If they did, this movie would have made $120 million at the box office. But it didn't, and that's okay, because it wasn't that good of a movie. But, you know, Walter Hill, Walter Hill has done so many better films. Last Man Standing with Bruce Willis, very underrated action film. One of my favorite Bruce Willis movies that nobody talks about anymore. Very underrated. 48 Hours and Another 48 Hours. Excellent action films. Extreme Prejudice is an awesome action film. That one's very underrated that nobody ever talks about. Red Heat is awesome. Underrated movie. Excuse me. Walter Hill has done a lot of great films. This is not one of them. I expected a lot more from Walter Hill, and I expected a lot more out of the fact because he wanted to work with Stallone. Him and Stallone have been friends for a number of years, and they always wanted to do a movie together. And then when they get the opportunity, they get fucked over. I don't think Walter Hill was the big problem on this film. I think Joel Silver was, and... Stallone when it came to the editing of the film and the rewriting of the film. I don't think Stallone did a bad job acting wise. I like Stallone in the movie. I like the fact that he plays a hitman. You know, it was something different like assassins. It was cool to see him play kind of an anti-hero. I like that. Stallone was not a problem acting wise. Behind the scenes he was, which I'll get to. But I want to get more, you know, get back to Walter Hill. So I don't think Walter Hill is the blame. I know originally they wanted Wayne Kramer, the guy who did Running Scared with Paul Walker, which is a great action film, a very underrated movie in my opinion. And him and Stallone couldn't get along, which isn't a surprise there. And Wayne Kramer wanted to make the movie really dark. and, and I mean, it is, a, it is a violent movie. There's no doubt about that. There is violence in the film. There's plenty of it. Um... But, you know, Wayne Kramer really wanted to make it dark. And, I, you know, I wish that him and Stallone could have just, you know, saw eye to eye on that. And Stallone could, you know, pull his head out of his ass with his ego and just say, yeah, you know, Wayne Kramer, this guy's done some films. He knows what he's doing. 
you know, let's let's do this. That and that's the thing that pisses me off. Like he gets Wayne Kramer fired from this movie, but he gives Patrick Hughes, a guy who directed one fucking movie that nobody's ever heard of, the reins to make Expendables three. So again, I'm calling bullshit, but I'm not. I mean. The Expendables films I already reviewed. Just go back on my channel and look at them. Should have said that in the beginning, but I already reviewed those. And the next, you know, this, the movie that Stallone did after this, Escape Plan, I already reviewed. So just, it's not hard to find on my channel. Just type in Escape Plan and Expendables and they'll come up. So that pisses me off because Wayne Kramer is a better fucking director than Patrick Hughes. And actually did movies that were good. Well, I don't even know the movie that Patrick Hills did. Was it called Red Hill or something? Some western? He did one fucking movie that nobody ever heard of. A lot of people know what Running Scared is. With Paul Walker. It's underrated. But a lot of people still know about the movie. So that pissed me off. You know, strike one. You know, strike two. Which fucking Joel Silver. And, you know, Joel Silver produced this. And this was the last movie he produced with Warner Brothers. And I think that's also one of the reasons why they kept pushing the movie back and stuff. Is because Joel Silver is a prick. And, you know, he was accusing Warner Brothers of fucking him over when the second Sherlock Holmes movie came out. And I guess, you know, they're like, well, your punishment for saying all that shit is we're going to push your movie back and push your movie back and push your movie back and push your movie back. Until nobody gives a fuck about it anymore. And we're going to release it in the dead of winter and it won't make any money. I think this movie made $15 million at the box office worldwide, if that. It fucking flopped. And it cost $50 million to make. I don't understand how it cost $50 million to make. Because it's a, it looks like a fucking direct-to-video movie. It doesn't look like a movie. It looks like a direct-to-video generic piece-of-shit action film. Like, what Cuba Gooding Jr. stars in are all these former stars who are delegated to fucking direct the video. It looks like a shitty Steven Seagal film. And there's a lot of those from the direct the video age, you know, the direct the video years. Most of the Van Dams have been good. You know, The Order, Wake of Death, you know, Van Damme has done a lot. But this movie looks like a shitty direct the video film. And that's saying, that's not, you know, that's saying a lot from Walter Hill, who's visually done a lot of great movies, great looking films. So I don't understand how this movie costs or 50 million. And that's the thing, like when you push your movie back, you know, you release the trailer, oh, we're going to push it back and then we're going to push it back again. People become less interested in it. It's like, well, they fucking pushed it back twice. Well, what's the point of us going to see it? We'll just get it when it comes on Netflix. We'll just get it when it comes out on Redbox. We don't need to go see it in the theaters. We'll wait another three months for it to come out on DVD. So these companies wonder why these films flop after they push them back and push them back and push them back. Because no one gives a fuck after you push it back three times or two times or whatever you know so they fucking fired Wayne Kramer which was stupid then they fired Thomas Jane because originally Thomas Jane was supposed to play the Sun Kang character and they they fired him Joel Silver fired him because he's white so he fired him for some racist bullshit because he's like well these buddy films the only way they work is if you have two different ethnicities or races. It can't be two white guys. So Tango and Cash was nothing. Tango and Cash didn't make any money at the box office. Tango and Cash wasn't a great movie. That movie just doesn't exist in the mind of Joel Silver. Showdown in Little Tokyo, okay, yeah, it flopped at the box office because they only opened it in 10 theaters or whatever. They fucking just did a limited release because Warner Brothers shit, shit all over the movie. But you can't, you know, okay, Brand, people say, well, Brandon Lee was Asian. But did Brandon Lee look Asian? No, he didn't. Dolph Lundgren is not Asian. Dolph Lundgren is white. So you have two white guys 
in an action film together, but, you know, I guess that movie doesn't count. Hell, Bad Boys is two black guys, two African-American guys. I guess those movies never made any money at the box office. So you don't need to have separate races or separate ethnicities. If you have a good script and a good director and people know what the fuck they're doing, unlike this movie, then you know what? It'll work. Not everything has to be Lethal Weapon, Joel Silver. Just because you produce Lethal Weapon doesn't mean every fucking buddy movie has to be Lethal Weapon. And I love those films, but it's always nice to see something different. So, fuck Joel Silver for being a racist fucking prick and firing Thomas Jane. Because that's what everybody wanted to see. Everybody wanted to see Rambo vs. The Punisher. Not Rambo versus a guy from the Fast and the Furious movies. And that's what they tried to do. They tried to appeal to the Fast and the Furious crowd. They tried to appeal to the Marvel crowd with this film. Now granted, it is rated R. It is a violent film. It has a lot of language and stuff in it. But that's what they tried to do. They tried to appeal to the younger crowd. Because they're like, oh, well, Sun Kang's in it. He's in all the Fast and the Furious movies. We'll go see it because of him. Nobody fucking saw the movie. When I went, I went at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon with a friend of mine. There was like 20 people in the theater, if that. And we were the youngest people in there. So no fucking young people went to go see this movie. Just like fucking Expendables 3. Well, it was all the downloads. It wasn't the downloads, Stallone, it, Lionsgate, and whoever. It's because your fucking movie sucked ass. Fucking Expendables, it took Expendables out in the back of a shitty alley behind a shitty motel and shot it in the back of the head and destroyed any hope of, you know, something old school. Now they want to do a TV series. I don't give a fuck about an Expendables TV series. I don't give a fuck about Expendables 4. It's dead. It's over with. The best the movie in the franchise is still the first one. Expendables 2 was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it, but the first one was still the best because they took it fucking serious. But anyway, back to this movie. So, Sun Kang, and I don't have an issue with Sun Kang in other films. This film, yes, because he does not belong in this movie. He does not fit in this movie. Fucking Google Cop, as Efri says, one of, you know, Matt's friends on here, Rambo Rap for Life. I didn't make that up. That, that, that's to go to him. That's his credit. Sun Kang was not good in this movie. Sun Kang was wasted in this movie. I like Sun Kang in the Fast and the Furious films. And I liked him in Live Free or Die Hard. But I do not like him in this movie. Because he does not belong in this movie. Fucking Google Cop does not belong with Rambo. That's all he did in this movie. Yeah, I need you to, to run a ID check on someone. Zzz, zzz. Yeah, did you get that ID check on someone? Good, thank you. Yeah, I need an ID check on someone. Zzz, zzz. Yeah, did you get that ID check on someone? He's here, we gotta go get him. Come on, we gotta go. That's all he did in this movie. Then he, for some reason... I don't know why, but they tried to give him and Stallone chemistry, and it didn't work. And the, the dialogue was just shitty between the characters. You know, oh, are you going to rub some tea leaves? Or what are you going to do, Kato? And, you know, that was just all stupid, shitty dialogue. It's like, who the fuck wrote all this? Hope Stallone didn't write it. The villains fucking suck. I don't care about Jason Momoa. I know a lot of people are like, oh, he's going to be Aquaman. It's going to be awesome. I'm sorry, folks, but Aquaman is a pointless fucking superhero. He's the Beastmaster underwater. That's all he is. And the Beastmaster is way cooler than fucking Aquaman. Fuck yeah, Beastmaster is cooler. Beastmaster is Mark Singer from Watchers 2. 
Real echelon motherfucker. Come on. Well, he was in the Conan the Barbarian remake, and yeah, how many people remember that movie? Because that fucking sucked too, and it flopped. Good, because it deserved a flop. Jason Momoa was a shitty villain. I didn't care. He was not intimidating. He did not, you know, make me worry about Stallone in the film. He was not a threat to Stallone. I didn't care about, um, what's the guy's name? Adwale Akinoi Agbaja. Agbayi, what I don't know how to pronounce the guy's name. I know I'm butchering it, but you don't know who I'm talking about. He didn't do anything. He sat in a chair in the whole damn movie. Christian Slater was wasted in this movie. Christian Slater should have been, you know, the main villain. That would have been more interesting. And then the stupid plot about how they want to take over New Orleans to make, you know, their own, like, condominiums and stuff. It was dumb. Why do like why in the past 10 15 years does do the villains in every action film have to have some stupid plot line where they are you know trying to build something or they're trying to use the land for something and they're trying to take over the land and they're trying to buy this land and they're trying to destroy this land it's old it's annoying and it's not a good enough reason to be a bad guy I know what some of you are saying. Well, you like Nowhere to Run with Jean-Claude Van Damme. That's what that movie was about. And that movie was made in 1993, okay? And that was a good story. Not, okay, Stallone's partner gets killed, which, why does a hitman need a partner? That doesn't make sense to me. Like, I don't know why they decided to do that. I thought that was stupid, too. Why couldn't it just been a friend of his that got killed? And Stallone went out for revenge. Because that would have made more fucking sense than his partner getting killed. And then Sun Kang's former partner who was dirty got killed. And now it's that was the guy that Stallone killed. And like that was all just stupid. Why couldn't just Sun Kang be investigating the murder and teams up with Stallone? Why does it got to be all complicated like that? And then Jason Momoa is an assassin for this guy, and he killed Stallone's partner, and he's tired of the way people are treating him, so he starts killing his people that he works for, and he wants to take over. I didn't give a fuck about any of that stuff in this movie. Why couldn't they just make it simple? Why couldn't Stallone's buddy gets killed? The cop, who I don't care if it was, you know, it should have been Thomas Jane. Why couldn't he just investigate the murder? Him and Stallone cross paths. Stallone tells them, you know, stay the fuck out of my way. They start working together reluctantly, and they find out who did it, and they go after him. We didn't need all this other stupid bullshit about a fucking land guy who was trying to steal the land and buy up the land, and no one gave a fuck about any of that. That's why this movie failed at the box office. I know what some of you are saying. Well, Fabio, why do you have it on DVD? Because Stallone did a good job acting-wise. He wasn't the problem in the movie. And it had some nice little practical action scenes. Such as the axe fight at the end and the raid on his house. Although, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice cracked. Although they used a CGI explosion. It had some good little bits of action in it. And it had a good performance from Stallone. And that's why I have the movie in my collection. It's not Stallone's worst film. That's fucking Driven. I'd rather watch this over Driven. And that's saying a lot, because, you know, this movie is no, no winner. And same with this movie, coming up next. This movie... Well, why do you have it? Because I like Stallone in the movie. And I didn't give a fuck about Stallone's daughter who was going to be a doctor, and she became a tattoo artist instead. I didn't give a shit about any of that. Why was it in the movie? It didn't need to be in the fucking movie. And then, oh, because we need a plot device at the end, his daughter will just get kidnapped. Whatever.
Yeah, so... Bullet to the head. You know, why? Couldn't have this... This movie should have been a million times better. Why'd they fire Wayne Kramer for no reason? why did they fire Thomas Jane over some stupid racist bullshit? Why didn't they not let Walter Hill just direct the movie how he wanted? Why was it so hard? But like I said, there are some things I like. I didn't think Stallone did a bad job acting-wise. Like I said, I liked him as a hitman. It was cool to see something different, you know, as a hitman character. You know, we hadn't seen that since Assassins. And, you know, he wasn't Rocky and Rambo. He wasn't Barney Ross. He was a different type of character, and that was cool. The movie did have some nice little practical action scenes. You know, the beginning when they go kill the guy. The fight in the bar was alright. The scene where Stallone goes to interrogate the guy at the spa. Guns don't kill people. Bullets do. You know, kills that guy. The little shootout at his house was okay, except for the CGI explosion at the end. And I like the, the axe fight, you know, it was something different. You know, what are we, fucking Vikings? You know, I like, Stallone was not a problem acting-wise in this movie. But behind the scenes, I think that was the problem, because I think what happened was, I think with the delaying of the film, that was probably Warner Brothers as well, because they're like, well, fuck Joel Silver, and rightfully so. They're not wrong in that one, but they shouldn't have pushed the movie back so much. That hurt the film. And I know Stallone did all these interviews. Well, I don't know why it got pushed back. I, I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm not working on that. I don't know. Walter Hill is doing his own thing. I think Stallone went in and re-edited the film. I honestly think that's what happened. Maybe Walter Hill did one cut and then Stallone wasn't happy with that. I Come on, you can't tell me that Stallone didn't go back in and not, you know, edit the movie. You know, it is what it is. And then I know, uh, like, and then yeah. Also, like, you know, first of all, it was supposed to come out in April, and then they pushed it back. And then it was supposed to come out in September, and then they pushed it back again. I think the September thing got pushed back because, you know, Stallone didn't want to compete with Expendables too. You know, because it was going to come out like a couple weeks later, and I don't think Stallone wanted to compete with himself, which. Doesn't make sense because, you know, uh, First Blood and Rocky 3 were released a few months apart. First Blood Part 2 and Rocky 4 were released a few months apart. Rocky th or Rambo 3 and Lockup were released a few months apart. I don't understand why Stallone's like, well, you know, yeah, you know, fuck that. I can't, you know, I can't have two movies out of once. You know, it was wrong. I can't do that. So I don't understand that logic where, oh, well, Expendables 2 came out and that movie is more important, so we need to, you know, elaborate more on that one and not this one. That's stupid. I thought that was stupid. But yeah, like I said, when you keep pushing your movie back, people are not going to be interested in seeing it anymore, and that's why it failed, because they released it in fucking February. That's why the, one of the reasons why The Last Stand failed. They released it in fucking January. It's fucking cold outside. Fucking snow's on the ground. People are not going to go out to see a goddamn movie. Especially when it's $10 for a fucking ticket. Too damn cold to be going to the movies. Fucking January and February. Are you kidding me? But... I think that's about it. I mean, there, like I said, acting wise, Stallone was good. I just think behind the scenes, you know, he, you know, I know he went in and rewrote part of the movie. So if he's doing that, I mean, come on, he had to go in there and edit some stuff. Maybe not the entire movie, but he had to edit some parts of the movie. I know he did. Come on, you know, Sly's done it on a lot of other films. But I think the reason why this movie failed is because. They fired Wayne Kramer for no reason. They fired Thomas Jane for some racist bullshit. They kept pushing the movie back. You know, that's why it failed. Because people were just not interested after they kept pushing it back. And, you know, they fired two people who could have made 
this movie really good. Wayne Kramer and Thomas Jane. And the script, you know, could have used a lot of work. The script was just dull. It was boring. And the film could have been shot better. It looks like a shitty directed video film. It looks like a shitty Steven Seagal directed video film. And I expect a hell of a lot more from Walter Hill. So I think maybe Walter Hill was just following orders. I don't think they let him do what he wanted to. And, you know, unfortunately the movie flopped. But, you know, if they would have just done it right from the beginning, if they would have just kept Thomas Jane in there and would have kept, you know, a better script and stuff like that, it would have been a much better film. It really would have been a better movie. But, you know, it's too late now. I mean, this movie came out, what, 2013? Already two years ago this movie came out. It's too late now. I know it's, I saw it on HBO recently. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. And I know there are people that like this movie. And if you like it, that's fine. I mean, I think it's okay. I don't think it's a very good movie. I mean, it's very mediocre. It's very lackluster. I can watch it for Stallone, but that's about it. Because I don't care about any of the other characters. I don't care about the villains. I only care about Stallone in this movie. And that's why I can watch it. I thought Sly did a, as good a job as he could have. He wasn't given much to work with, but I think he... Pulled through, thank God, for his, you know, he pulled his weight, and that's all that matters. But, anyway, I guess I will call this a rant, because nothing really positive about it, except Stallone and some of the set pieces. But, overall, this was just a missed opportunity. Bullet to the Head could have been a really good action film if they had just let Walter Hill do his job, and if they had a better script. Like, if Walter Hill wrote it, and if him and Stallone wrote the movie together, it could have been a hell of a lot better. And they shouldn't have fucking changed the release date so many times. That's why it failed. Because they kept pushing it back. But, oh well. But anyway guys, I hope that you enjoyed my rant or review, whatever you want to call it, on Bullet to the Head. And stay tuned because I'm going to do another rant slash review on grudge match which was just as disappointing in my opinion because this movie could have been really good as well but anyway guys thank you for watching and sayonara